Hi everyone, Brockbone here, I'm back with another Red Team tip. And this week we're going to take a look at Layer 8 Security's Silent Hound. So I got a comment on one of my recent videos about more OPSEC safe tools. This is one of the more OPSEC safe tools I've run into in recent days. It literally will enumerate an Active Directory with a single LDAP query. That LDAP query does everything on that single LDAP query and then puts it into a pickle database locally. So even if you query again, you will not query Active Directory. So it's one query, one time, and the defenders would have to catch you on that very first shot. So it's very unlikely that you would be caught. So this one's very OPSEC safe if you have a Linux host in the environment and you can run, or you can install WSL on a Windows box and run it as well. So let's take a look at Silent Hound. So I've got my Kali box here and I'm in my Silent Hound directory. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my command. So we've got Python, silenthound.py. We've got our dash u for our user. Notice I've got hacklab, which is the domain in front of that. I've got dash p and the password. And notice this is a very simple password. You do need credentials, but any password in the domain from any domain user will work. You don't have to have any credentials. So spray for it. Uh, fish for it, do something to get a single set of creds. Many engagements will give you a single set of creds, so you should be able to query this out of the domain. This is your domain controller IP. Uh, pretty simple to find. Typically, this is just any DNS server in, in a domain is going to be Active Directory integrated, and that's a domain controller in a lot of ways. Uh, otherwise, you can use NL test to tell you domain controller names if you have a Windows host. There's lots of ways to fingerprint out and get the domain controller your domain name, hacklab.com, dash G, that stands for groups, dash N, uh, that one is, I'll just have this in front of me, organizational unit, K is keywords, and then dash dash Kerberos here. So G and K and Kerberos, this is gonna give us a lot of information when we run this tool, but here we go. So let's query this out. We've got 500 users in this active directory. So we should be able to find something that's interesting pretty immediately. And we're almost done here. Okay, immediately at the very bottom, you can see we've got the next step for our attack if we wanna use it. And that's Kerberosting the IIS service account. If we can find this account or we can get uh, you know, a password, we could probably Kerberos this out with a user that we have and just get this IIS service account hash and try to break it. Um, otherwise, lots and lots of information here. See your schema admins, your enterprise admins, your domain admins, just lots of info. And here's all the users that it dumped out. It's just a ton of information. All that comes from a single LDAP query. So it's very OPSEC safe. So just to prove that this tool caches everything, we're going to run it again, but we're going to break it. So let's do this. We're going to break the password. So we're just going to call it pass now. And then we're going to do a dash O for output. So dash O, and then we'll give it hack lab. And this is going to output a bunch of text files from the cache database that it downloaded locally. So here we go. And you can see it is located the LDAP cache, trying to run the updated query and did not run because it has the pickle database. And there we go. So it output the same stuff to screen, but also notice now with the output, it did hacklab domain admins dot text, all these different text files. So if we cat out hacklab domain underscore admins dot text, we can see all of our domain admins. So these would be our major targets now, right? Now this doesn't work with your typical Bloodhound workflow where you can bring it in and see the graph, but it's a good start in a well-defended network. Um, one other interesting thing you can do here is there is the pickle file, right? The pickle file is not humanly readable by default, but you can convert it to JSON and then use that in some other system like Elastic if you so chose. Maybe that can give you some information or you can do some correlation that way. But simply, if you do, I'll show you what I got to convert it. So pickle to JSON, very simple. You can search this out on GitHub. You could probably write this script yourself, many of you. This is really, really simple. Uh, or just change it to make it work the way you need it to work, whatever system you need. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll convert 
that pickle file. So we'll do Python. If I type today, Python. Python 3, convert.py. And then it's going to give a dot. So we'll do dot hacklab dash com dot pickle. And that's then going to create a JSON file in here. Now it does create it the same and the other file's hidden. So you can see it creates the dot hacklab. So if we cat out dot hacklab.com JSON, you can now see human readable JSON key value pairs. So this you could work on importing into Bloodhound if you got the formats just right. Um, I feel like this is enough information for most people to at least progress. Um, I still recommend using Sharphound if you want to use that traditional Bloodhound methodology. Just realize it's not as OPSEC safe as Silent Hound. Silent Hound, really interesting because of its OPSEC safe, safe nature. And that's it. Another red team tip down. Send me anything you guys would like to hear. This one was inspired by a question that I got. So uh, keep watching and hack the planet to defend better.